This is a continuation of financial statement analysis. In this presentation, I will be discussing some common profitability ratios. But before we proceed, as of this point, you should have already mastered the different methods in analyzing your financial statements. You have the time series, cross-sectional, ratio analysis, okay, and DuPont analysis. As a continuation of ratio analysis, okay, we are now going to discuss the common profitability ratios. So what is profitability? This refers to the company's ability to generate profits from its business operations. Okay, so most of the time, we'll be talking about nominal accounts. Okay? Because your nominal accounts are the ones used to account for the results of business operations. And they are found in your income statement. And that's it. Thank you. Joke lang. Yeah, so what are the common profitability ratios? Okay, now there are a lot of ratios, you know? and these are just some of the profitability ratios, and you have to memorize them. Okay, you have your gross profit margin, the operating profit margin, EBIT margin, net profit margin. Okay, if you try to look at these ratios. There's something in common, and that is the word. Let's try to use a pen, and let's use my favorite color, red. Okay, you now have the word margin. Now, to give you a tip, okay, to give you a tip, okay, and if we're talking about profitability ratios, I normally categorize them into three. You have the ratios that uses margins in their names. And the ratios that uses returns. Normally, if a ratio okay, has margin, has the word margin attached to its name, normally the denominator will be your sales. There. There you go. As shown here, sales divided by sales divided by sales. And these ratios are actually cross-sectional. They are used in cross-sectional analysis. Why? Because they only measure your performance at a given period of time. Okay? So how much of your sales went to gross profit? How much of that went to operating profit? How much of that went to your EBIT? Or also known as your operating profit? And so on and so forth. Okay? There you go. So this one can also be considered as a margin ratio because all the denominators are in sales. Now those ratios with returns on their names okay, will normally have the following formula. So this one has the numerator. This one is the denominator. In the numerator of these ratios, you will see what's common. You have your net income or net profit. Yeah. So now it's easy to recall the formula, you know, the different formulas of these ratios. So every time you hear the word margin, aha, the denominator will be sales. Or if you see the word return, the numerator will be your net income. So it's so easy to memorize. Now, if you go to this section right here, these are what we call your specialized ratios because they can be used initially to evaluate a, a company's profitability, but at the same time, it can also be used to evaluate solvency okay, and risk. For example, your time's interest earned okay, can, be mesh, can be understood no, as the company's ability to earn it's interest expenses. So the higher the times interest earned, the better. But when it comes to leverage, okay, you don't actually want this to be too high. Okay. And because if your interest expense okay, is too low, it signifies that 
well, your liabilities are too low and you may not be optimizing your capability or your capacity to generate income through leverage. Same with your times fixed charges are earned. Normally, for profitability, you want this ratio to be higher. But for leverage analysis, you want this ratio to be lower. Okay. This ratio, your times interest earned, can be used as an indicator of financial leverage. While this one can be used as an indicator of operating leverage. Now, another thing. No? Okay. When we talk about ratios, if your numerator and denominator are both real accounts, let me put that. Let me write that down. You have your real accounts okay, as your numerator. And then if you divide that by another real account, you don't need to compute for the average. Same with nominal accounts. If your numerator is a nominal account, I'm just going to write nom. Okay, and your denominator is also a nominal account. You don't have to compute for the average. When do we compute for the average? We only compute for the average if your numerator is a nominal account. And your denominator is a real account. And in that case, we are going to compute for the average of the real account. Okay, let's use a different color here. Let's try to use yellow. Okay, let's put average. And how do we compute for the average real account? Okay, you now go to your balance sheet. Okay, you get the beginning balance of your real account. Beginning balance. Add your ending balance right here. Ending balance. Okay, so that's my most historical B. Okay, and divide that by 2. This is known as your simple average. Why do we have to do that? Take note, your nominal accounts, which are found in your income statement, okay, are results of transaction for one period only. While your real accounts, which are found in your balance sheet, are results of transactions from the beginning of the business. So they are not that comparable. So to reduce the effect, no? of how the information or how these values were accumulated, we get the average. Ayan. So now your real account is comparable to your nominal accounts. Going back to our ratios, as a review, margins, the denominator will always be sales. If you have returns or net profit, the numerator will always be net profit or net income. If you try to look, let's use another color right here. Let's try to use the color dark blue. If you try to look at this ratio, your net profit margin is also your return on sales because your net income because they have the same numerator and denominator there you go while your EBIT margin we all know that another term for your EBIT is operating profit this one is the same it will give you the same percentages and that's it thank you